Hello everyone, you are watching The Greek Alphabet, Pronunciation and a Brief History, Part 2. Xi. In Classical Greek, it was pronounced Xi, just like in Koine in Modern Greek. Xi likely came from the Phoenician letter Samk. The corresponding letter in Hebrew is called Samek. Xi is the 14th letter in the Greek alphabet, and Samk is the 15th letter in the Phoenician alphabet. It doesn't seem like the letters Xi and Samk sounded similar in Classical Greek and Phoenician, but maybe the Greeks heard the S sound as a KS sound. One form of samk may have simply been turned about 45 degrees clockwise, the tail removed, the letter moved to a lower plane, and the long leg on the bottom bent at the end to form the small xi. For the form of samk that looks like a pole with three horizontal lines crossing it, its tail at the bottom might have been removed, the letter moved to a lower plane, and then the rest of its vertical line removed to form the large xi. Omicron. In Classical Greek, it was pronounced Omicron, just like in Koine Greek. In Modern Greek, it's pronounced Omicron, without the second accent. This letter means something like little o or short o. Omicron came from the Phoenician letter ein. The corresponding letter in Hebrew is ayin. Omicron is the 15th letter in the Greek alphabet, and Ein is the 16th letter in the Phoenician alphabet. These letters didn't sound anything alike in Classical Greek and Phoenician. Ein was enlarged to the size of Alpha and written along the same plane to form Omicron. P. In Classical Greek, it was pronounced P just like in Koine and Modern Greek. P promptly came from the Phoenician letter Pe. P is the 16th letter in the Greek alphabet, and Pe is the 17th letter in the Phoenician alphabet. It seems like the letters P and Pe sounded similar in Classical Greek and Phoenician, making a P sound. For multiple forms of pe, the letter might have been turned about 20 degrees counterclockwise, the bottom shortened, the letter straightened into a right angle, and the top line lengthened for the pe with a small hook. A short vertical line added to the end of the horizontal line, the letter moved to a lower plane, the letter reversed, and then the short vertical line lengthened to match the other side to form the Greek letter P. Rho. In Classical Greek, I believe it was pronounced Rho, just like in Koine and Modern Greek. Now the interesting thing about this letter is, when it begins a word, just like in the word Rho, then it always has a rough breather. In Classical Greek, a rough breather meant that an H sound was supposed to be pronounced before the letter. I'm not exactly sure how you'd pronounce H before R, other than maybe hero or something like that. So maybe that's a little bit closer to what it sounded like in Classical Greek. I'm not exactly sure. Rho came from the Phoenician letter Rosh. The corresponding Hebrew letter is called Resh. Rho is the 17th letter in the Greek alphabet, and Rosh is the 20th letter in the Phoenician alphabet. It seems like the letters Rho and Rosh sounded similar in Classical Greek and Phoenician, making an R sound. Rosh was turned about 20 degrees clockwise and reversed, or simply reversed, to form the Greek Rho. Sigma In Classical Greek, it was pronounced Sigma. 
In Koine in modern Greek, it's pronounced Sigma. Sigma came from the Phoenician letter Shin. The corresponding Hebrew letter is called Sin or Shin in Hebrew, depending on where a dot is placed over the letter. Sigma is the 18th letter in the Greek alphabet, and Shin is the 21st letter in the Phoenician alphabet. It seems like the letters sounded somewhat similar in Classical Greek and Phoenician, the Phoenician letter making an SH sound. The Greeks probably considered SH and S sounds to be very similar. You can see a similar swap of SH for S when you compare the Greek and Hebrew names for Jesus. You can see that the SH in Yeshua became an S sound in Jesus. The form of sheen that looks like raised arms and a neck would have been turned 90 degrees clockwise, enlarged, moved to a lower plane, and the curved back split in the middle to form the Greek sigma. The form of sheen that looks similar to a W would have been turned 90 degrees clockwise and moved to a lower plane to form sigma. Tau. In classical Greek, it was pronounced tau. In Koine, in modern Greek, it's pronounced either tav or taf. It seems somewhat ambiguous, though modern Greeks seem to all agree that it's pronounced taf. Now the reason why this is ambiguous in Koine and modern Greek is because it's extremely rare for the digraph alpha upsilon to come at the end of a word. The digraph alpha upsilon can either make an av sound or an af sound, depending on which letter comes after it. So when we see the letter tau with no words following it, it's hard to know whether we should pronounce it tav or taf. As I've already said, modern Greeks seem to all agree that it should be taf, but I've also heard teachers of Koine Greek call it tav. So again, it's ambiguous. Tau probably came from the Phoenician letter tau. Tau is the 19th letter in the Greek alphabet, and the 22nd letter, which is the last letter in the Phoenician alphabet. It seems like the letters sounded similar in Classical Greek and Phoenician, making a T sound. For the tau that looks somewhat like a fish hook, it might have been turned about 25 degrees counterclockwise, the arm, or hook, mirrored on the other side, the top cut off at the arms, and both bent arms straightened and clipped to form the Greek tau. For the tau that looks like a lowercase t, the top may have been cut off at the arms to form the Greek tau. For the tau that looks somewhat similar to an X, the letter might have been turned about 40 degrees counterclockwise, and both arms independently moved up to the top to form the Greek tau. Upsilon. In classical Greek, it was pronounced Upsilon, just like in Koine Greek. In modern Greek, it's pronounced Ypsilon, without the second accent. The name Ypsilon might have been given to this letter to differentiate it from Digamma, another letter which may have originally looked very similar, if not exactly the same. The Greek character for Ypsilon probably came from the Phoenician letter Wow. Ypsilon is the 20th letter in the Greek alphabet, and Wow is the 6th letter in the Phoenician alphabet. These letters didn't sound anything alike in Classical Greek and Phoenician. Wow's tail may have been slightly moved to the left and cut shorter, and the letter enlarged and moved to a lower plane to form the Greek Ypsilon. For the Wow that looks more like a Y, the bowl shape at the top might have been stretched downwards to form Ypsilon. Phi. In Classical Greek, it was pronounced P. In Koine, in Modern Greek, it's pronounced Phi. The Greek character for Phi likely came from the Phoenician letter Kof. Phi is the 21st letter in the Greek alphabet, 
and Kof is the 19th letter in the Phoenician alphabet. These letters didn't sound anything alike in Classical Greek and Phoenician. For the kof that resembles a slanted eight with a tail, it might have been formed into a circle at the top, the line running through the circle turned vertically and moved up, and the letter shrunk to form the Greek phi. For the kof that looks more like a ring with a vertical line running from the top and out the bottom, the vertical line may have simply been extended past the top of the circle to form phi. Another possibility is that phi is a modified copa, instead of coming directly from kof. We'll talk about the letter copa later. He. In classical Greek, it was pronounced ki. In koine, in modern Greek, it's pronounced he. Before consonants and back vowels, it makes a hard ch sound. But before front vowels, it makes more of an h sound. In the word he, the letter he makes the h sound, he, because iota is a front vowel. In the word choros, the letter he makes the hard ch sound, choros, because omicron is a back vowel. I've noticed that modern Greeks don't always enunciate the ch sound as much as I tend to. Also, I've seen some videos where they don't distinguish between the H and hard CH sounds, so maybe they think of them as the same sound. Really though, there is a slight difference. The Greek character for he might have come from the Phoenician letter tau. He is the 22nd letter in the Greek alphabet, and tau is also the 22nd letter, though the last letter in the Phoenician alphabet. These letters didn't sound anything alike in classical Greek and Phoenician. For the tau that looks somewhat like a fish hook, it might have been turned about 25 degrees clockwise, its arm extended up to the top and other side of the letter, the curved end removed, the long line shortened at the bottom, the letter moved to a lower plane, and the shorter line turned about 35 degrees clockwise to form the Greek he. For the tau that looks more like a lowercase t, the horizontal line might have been moved down to the middle of the vertical line, the horizontal line lengthened as long as the other, and the letter tilted about 45 degrees clockwise and moved to a lower plane to form he. For the tau that looks more like an X, the two arms might have been connected together to form he. We will get back to the Greek alphabet right after this. The Bible study section of Dinagolus.com has Bible-related articles, equations, and more. To get to Dinagolus.com, Simply type go-dine.com into your address bar and press enter, or click the link in the description box below. Alright, we're back. Psi. In Classical Greek, it was pronounced psi, just like in Koine in Modern Greek. The Greek character for psi may have come from the Phoenician letter kof or one of the versions of Mame. Psi is the 23rd letter in the Greek alphabet, Kof is the 19th letter in the Phoenician alphabet, and Mame is the 13th letter in the Phoenician alphabet. None of these letters sounded anything alike in Classical Greek and Phoenician. For the Kof that looks like a slanted eight with a tail, the top may have been formed into a circle, the line running through it turned vertically, the top of the circle removed, the arm shrunken, and the letter moved to a higher plane to form the pitchfork-looking psi. For the kof that looks like a circle with a line running from the top and out the bottom, the top half of the circle might have been removed, the arm shortened, the letter enlarged, and the letter moved to a higher plane to form the Greek letter psi. For the mame that looks like a pitchfork with a long arm hanging off of one of the prongs, the long arm may have been removed, 
the letter enlarged, and the letter moved to a lower plane to form C. Another possibility is that C is a modified COPA. Omega. In Classical Greek, it was pronounced like Omega. In Koine Greek, it was pronounced something like Omega. In Modern Greek, it's pronounced Omega without the first accent. Now notice that it's hard to accent Omega with its two accents. Omega. This is probably why the first accent was removed from the word in Modern Greek. In Classical Greek, it would be easier to hear both accents in the word because of the way they would accent the words. I'll tell you more about this ancient accent system later. I'm not really sure where the Greek character for Omega came from, but maybe it could have come from the Phoenician letter Lambda or the Greek letter Omicron. Omega is the 24th letter, the last letter in the Greek alphabet. Omicron is the 15th letter in the Greek alphabet, and Lambd is the twelfth letter in the Phoenician alphabet. Omega and Omicron sounded similar, but Omega and Lambd didn't. If Omega came from Lambd, the line at the top might have been shortened, the letter mirrored, both sides connected together at the top with a curved line, the letter moved to a lower plane, a little higher than Omicron and any tails pointing downwards removed to form the Greek Omega. If Omega came from Omicron, the letter was enlarged, moved to a lower plane, and a horizontal line was added below it to form Omega. Now here's another interesting point. In modern Greek, sometimes when Greeks write Omega, then they actually draw what looks like a large Omicron with a line below it just like you can see in the illustration below. If Omega came from Omicron, this might have been the way that it originally looked. Later on, it was changed to look different or better. And then in modern Greek, then it was changed back. I'm not sure if that's the history of Omega or not. Possibly it could have come from Lambda. Probably more likely it came from Omicron. I'm not 100% sure about either of those. Ancient letters and characters. Digamma. Vowel. This letter, when it was used as a letter, made a W sound, like in the word cow. The original name of the letter could have been vowel, pronounced yao, because of its similar sound to W in the Phoenician letter wow. Vowel was probably spelled wow originally, but when the letter was dropped out of the alphabet, Upsilon replaced it even in the spelling of its own name, hence yuao instead of wow. Digamma may have come from the Phoenician letters wow and yod. Digamma sounds like it came from wow, and it looks like it came from either wow or yod. Digamma was the sixth letter in the Greek alphabet, coming between epsilon and zeta. Wow is the sixth letter in the Phoenician alphabet, and Yod is the tenth letter in the Phoenician alphabet. It seems that Digamma and Wow sounded similar in Classical Greek and Phoenician, making a W sound. For the Yod that looks like a comb, the leg on the far right may have been removed. The letter turned about 75 degrees clockwise. The letter enlarged, the letter moved to a slightly lower plane, and the letter reversed to form the Greek Digamma. For the yod that looks like a backwards F with a tail, it might have been enlarged and reversed to form digamma. For the wow that has a bowl at the top and a long tail, the bowl shape might have been turned about 90 degrees counterclockwise and moved to the right slightly, the letter enlarged and the letter reversed to form digamma. Stau, stigma. Stau was a cursive form of digamma, which much later inherited the name stigma because it looked similar to a newly invented ligature with that name. Modern Greeks will recognize the name stigma because today the name is used for the final sigma, 
which it inherited because it looks like the curse of Daigama. So, the name Stigma has been used for three different characters, the first being a ligature, the second a curse of Daigama, and the third a form of Sigma. Because Stau is just another form of Daigama, it most likely was pronounced exactly the same, or in other words, W is in cow. Because Stau is a simplified Daigama, the character for Stau likely came much later, after the small Daigama was well known. Stau looks like a wider, simplified small Daigama. Kopa. This letter, when it was used, probably made a K slash Q sound, like in the word king. It was no longer in use in classical times, Kappa completely replacing it. Before Kopa dropped out of the alphabet, it was probably spelled Kopa. It should probably be transliterated as a Q, but generally the later Greek spelling, Kopa, is transliterated instead, making it a K. Kopa probably came from the Phoenician letter Kof. I believe Kopa was the 18th letter in the Greek alphabet, coming between P and Rho. Kof is the 19th letter in the Phoenician alphabet. It seems that Kopa and Kof sounded similar in Classical Greek and Phoenician, making a K slash Q sound. For the Kof that looks like a slanted 8 with a tail, the top may have been formed into a ring, the line running through the letter removed, leaving only a tail. The tail at the bottom turned about 25 degrees clockwise and moved vertically to the center of the letter, and the circle shrunk to form the archaic Greek kopa. For the kof that looks like a ring with a line running from the top and out the bottom, the part of the line within the ring may have simply been removed to form the archaic kopa. The kopa that looks like a backwards N might be based off of the kof that looks like a slanted 8 with a line running through it, or perhaps noon. Sambi. In classical Greek, this letter would be pronounced sampi. It was likely spelled sampi originally. This letter was equivalent to sigma, and was later completely replaced by sigma. I assume that either Sambi and Sigma were used at the same time in Attica or Ionia, or one of these regions was using Sambi while the other was using Sigma. As a side note, San was the Doric letter used in place of Sigma. I don't know whether we should consider Sambi and Sigma as two similar but separate letters, or two versions of the same letter. It depends on where it came from. Sambi might have come either from the Phoenician letter Sheen or Sade. The corresponding letter to Sade in Hebrew is called Sade. Sambi may have been the 27th letter in the Greek alphabet, coming after Omega. Sheen is the 21st letter in the Phoenician alphabet, and Sade is the 18th letter in the Phoenician alphabet. It seems that Sambi and Sheen sounded similar in Classical Greek and Phoenician making an S sound. Sambi and Sade probably sounded similar too, even if Sade actually made a TS sound in Phoenician. For the Sheen, the letter could have been turned 180 degrees clockwise, the middle line lengthened, the arm squared. For the Sheen that looks like a W, the bottom might have been pulled up too, and the arms lengthened to form the archaic Greek Sambi. For the Sade that looks like a flag, the letter could have been turned about 115 degrees clockwise, the wavy line straightened and moved to the left, the horizontal line bent on both sides, and the letter enlarged and moved to a higher plane to form the archaic Sambi. For the Sade that looks something like a lowercase h, the letter could have been turned about 65 degrees clockwise, the curved leg straightened and moved to the left. The horizontal line bent on the ends, and the letter moved to a higher plane to form the archaic Sambi. Also, notice that the Sade that looks like a flag 
could have been made to look similar to the modern Sambi. Show. There is another letter slash character which I haven't mentioned yet called Show, but I didn't find much information about it other than that it existed. Show could be another letter, or it could just be a different form of one of the letters I've already mentioned. I don't know where the character for Show came from, other than perhaps Sheen, when it was used, who used it, or even exactly how it was pronounced. It wasn't included in the Greek alphabetic numeral system so it's generally not very important for us to know about. Final remark. In classical Greek, Greek was accented with pitch instead of stress. This means Greek would have sounded more like singing than it did in Hellenistic times and now. When I shared the pronunciation of the letters in classical Greek in this video, I chose to use stress to accent the letters instead of pitch which would sound even more foreign to modern Greeks. Alright, that's the end of this video. If you like this video, why not consider subscribing and hitting the like button. Hitting the like button will help YouTube rank this video a little bit higher, and hopefully more people will find it, watch it, and enjoy it just as much as you have. Thank you for watching, everyone.